What up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Nerd Gen Report. I'm your host, Pablo, and joining me, as always, is Mr. Brian Schultz. Brian? Um, DC is in shambles, and this is nothing new. It's, it's just they... It's like quicksand. It's like you see them trying to get out and they see a branch and it's just, <laughs> it's just not close enough, it seems. Brian. Um, Super Pets. We thought Super Pets was gonna do very well. Yeah, the reviews are pretty good. Exactly. People just don't seem interested. And I was watching John Campion. He was right. Um, the, the the trailers weren't that funny. It's like, I don't understand. I don't, I don't know who's in charge of funny at these places. Who's in charge of funny? Because he's not doing a good job. Or she or them or they are not doing a good job with picking out funny stuff and making people want to go out and see these films. Um. You had made mention, Brian, that this could affect Black Adam. Explain. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, uh, I would have, I would have bet, and we did talk about it when it first was announced that this could be, you know, five hundred million plus type of global endeavor. And I mean, this is a ninety million dollar budgeted animated film with an incredible cast that might not actually turn a profit at the rate mm -hmm. they're going. Mm -hmm. uh, now. In fairness, I haven't seen it. Um, uh, I, the kid wants to see it. We did not see it opening weekend. We are going to go see it probably in the next week or two with some of her friends. So there is some interest at the kid level mm -hmm. to see this. But yeah, no, I think whether it's the Minions, because that was obviously like the biggest animated movie launch, I think one of the biggest ones of all time. And that's still rolling along. So maybe that's kind of pulling some, some audience. But yeah, like... It should not be lost on people that Dwayne Johnson is the voice of crypto in the movie. He's the lead mm -hmm. and with his buddy, Kevin Hart and Dwayne Johnson and his ex-wife and business partner, Danny Garcia are producers on this film. Yeah. And it, you know, this film looks headed to be a commercial disappointment, even though it seems like reviews were okay. It, you gotta count it on the scoreboard here. We, as we get yeah. closer to Black Adam, and you know, I think we're gonna have a broader little discussion here about DC. It is very, you know, if you look like, I went back and I was like, I didn't, I guess I totally, I kind of missed how involved Dwayne Johnson has already been in the DC world. So he, he and Danny Garcia, so Danny Garcia is really the name you should watch because that's actually like the business head of the rocks enterprise and like i said they were married they're still business partners so danny garcia is a producer on shazam first shazam and second right so shazam critically acclaimed commercially kind of meh now we get super pets critical response pretty good box office meh shazam 2 we've kind of written off it's up against <laughs> avatar 2 we don't see any way that movie's going to be a, a major success and then you got Black Adam, which, you know, we anyone who watches this channel knows we are very skeptical about its ability to be a mega hit. We want it to do well, but so you might you might be sitting here by Christmas where The Rock and Danny Garcia have been on four separate DC projects as producers, voices, and lead talent, and not one of them would qualify as a big hit. If you're David Zaslav, why, why are you going to be doing a ton of business with them if they can't get one of these to really land in the public consciousness? I had said previously that I thought The Rock wants to be the Kevin Feige of DC. Um, Brian, is that still, do you think that is the case? And Warner Brothers is waiting to see what Black Adam does before not saying, yes, let's do that, but at least get it to the table and discussing that. 
Yeah, the, you know, when you first said it, I kind of I kind of read it as a little tongue tongue in cheek. I was like, oh, well, you know, sure, the, the rock the rock likes to have a lot of control over his projects, but the idea of him as like the mastermind of an entire comic universe. But when you see this production pattern of like them involved with Shazam and them involved with Super Pets, and now he's he's obviously frontlining Black Adam, and you know, and and then you know the rock. As I said, he worked incredibly hard, and so he's promoting this as like the new era of DC. I want to usher in the new era of DC. Yeah, I think you're onto something. I think they are pushing really hard to kind of have the role that Zack Snyder had uh, back in 2013. And you know, we talked about the Superman thing, and I think one other fact that people watching this channel should really be aware of is that. Danny Garcia is the agent for some guy named Henry Cavill. So you can kind of tell where the battle lines are being drawn and why The Rock wants Henry Cavill and calls him the Superman of our generation. Why he... That reeks of The Rock and Danny Garcia pushing WB to give Cavill what he wants. And there's rumors about him wanting a lot of money and his own creative control. But when you read that, and you understand that Garcia is his agent, you're like, wait a minute, that sounds a lot like how The Rock negotiates for his <laughs> projects. And you kind of, it kind of all fits. And if you're Warner Brothers and you got new management, you're kind of like, well, wait a second here. Like, we don't, we, your banner with us hasn't given us billion dollar hits. We're, we're not sure we want to hand over the keys to you guys to run everything that's going to come after. I do think there is a little bit of a standoff here going into Black Adam. And if Black Adam does not hit, and I mean hit, I will be very I would be very interested to see what the fallout is, but I guarantee you there is broader fallout in the DC universe related to that. And it, you know, we'll see how hard a line Zaslov draws, because you kind of do want to be in the rock business. He generally makes you money that at least gets you profitable more than not. But like DC shouldn't be about being profitable. It should be about being the thing. Like that's not the thing. So yeah. yes, I think this is a really interesting soap opera behind the scenes subplot that seems to be taking shape here. How does Alan Horn figure into all of this? Alan Horn, um, based on the limited knowledge that I have about this situation, is sort of like what I dare say a mentor to Kevin Feige. Alan Horn. So yeah, well, I would say Alan Horn has roots at Warner Brothers and has a time at Disney. So he's got a he's got a nice looking resume. Like from a if you're if you're a fan of superhero, mm -hmm. this is a guy who walks in the room and says, I was running kind of the I was running kind of creative for Warner Brothers at the time when we brought Christopher Nolan in to do Batman. So kind of got that in pocket, okay. that's pretty good. He gets pushed out in 2010. So he has none of the Snyderverse controversy on his ledger because he was gone. Yes. He goes to Disney and is there from 2010 to 2019. Hmm. So he's there from the time of Iron Man 2 to Endgame. That's pretty good. Like, <laughs> so like his touch is pretty good. Like he, he could give you a resume and you're like, holy moly, like this guy doesn't hopefully fit. is not hopefully is not at the he's there at the right time. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> okay. But that's my point is that like there's a little bit of like David Zasloff is friends with Alan Horn. They go way back and he's running it back. His role is a little nebulous. He is not in the same role that he had before. He's more of a consultant, but he did offer a quote where he said, I have a lot of experience with DC. I will be heavily involved with DC, heavily involved with DC. So to our rock discussion, this will be a new strong voice in the room for or against, we don't yet know, but Alan Horn will have his say on how much influence someone like a Dwayne Johnson is able to exert over DC going forward. Yeah, that's gonna be very interesting. 
how do you feel about it? I'm kind of like mixed. I mean, him being in the presence of a lot of successful franchises is huge. So his experience of being in the room when I guess some of these decisions are being made and what's going on and all that other stuff is, again, huge. Is he going to be that strong voice that says no to The Rock if he's at the table? That's the thing. If I see any hints of this all being about The Rock, then I know where this is all coming from. Because all we've seen when it comes from that side is The Rock is the top bill. He is the face of whatever character that he's doing. Not only the face of the character, he is The Rock. He's The Rock in everything that he does. I'm sorry. <laughs> this, it, nothing changes. So, um, but I'm, ex I, I'm, I'm, I am excited that he, someone is there to possibly thwart anything that doesn't sound right in terms of create creative. Yeah, I think so to be this, the pro and con, the pro is, as you say, it's blockbuster experience. There's definitely something to be said for having a feel for an idea and a process that has been like, I've been there and this translates to a billion dollars. Yeah, box yeah. Office. It's something that fans and audiences gravitate toward. The part that worries me a little bit is Zaslav in his hires across the broader company so far, there's definitely a little sense of running it back with people he knows older people, people have been in the business a long time, people he's worked with, like he hired the heads of MGM after Amazon bought them. Like there is something to be said for having newer, at least a couple newer forward thinking voices in the room, which is why I've been pushing, like you should hire some of the, you should go after someone on the parliament, someone who's like a Nate Moore, someone who's younger and be like, hey, you need to have someone who's on the pulse today, as opposed yeah. to people who have done it necessarily for, for 20 or 30 years. So. That's my like con is like, are we getting a WB that's like a little too old boys network and maybe won't be quite as in touch with like where the ball is going? Yeah. That's my concern. Yeah. 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 And that is a valid one. Um, and speaking of being stuck in the past, we got some other DC news. I, I was just about to mention it. So apparently, And there was a, it was announced that um, uh, Jason Momoa announced mistakenly that Ben Affleck is going to be in Aquaman 2. Whether it's going to be Batman, Bruce Wayne, how much time is he going to have on screen? I have no idea. People are ecstatic about it, Brian. I'm not ecstatic. I'm curious to see how differently does he play whatever character he's going to be the bruce wayne batman i'm interested in seeing how different or the same he plays his character i would i would think it's going to probably be the same who knows your thoughts on this revelation and do you care i don't care you know because i know this is going to be over soon go ahead well for a guy who has been done with batman <laughs> He certainly likes coming back to play Batman. <laughs> um, the rumor going around, which I find a little curious, is that this is a ripple effect of the WB changing the release dates and having Aquaman 2 come out before Flashpoint. And as a result, it was supposed to be Michael Keaton who was in Aquaman 2 as he continues his comeback tour. Uh, across DC, but because now Aquaman 2 is coming out four months earlier, that would make no sense in the continuum of the films. So they had to bring Affleck back to make everything work, to which I say, well, then why did you just not, why don't you just have Aquaman 2 come out after Flashpoint? What's, what's the problem here? 
like these movies are shot. They're, I mean, Aquaman 2 is doing reshoots. That's why Affleck like, popped up. But like, Flash is done. Like, you could, it can come out anytime you want. And quite honestly, you probably might want to have it come out yesterday to get it over with. But yeah. so when I hear that, I'm like, well, that's an easily fixable problem. So is that really what's going on? Yeah. Or is there a little element of, you know, a little bit of unity among the Snyderverse characters who kind of like, like bringing back their pals to kind of keep showing up as a reminder of the Snyderverse and what it stood for. And in, in a weird way, I don't want to say they're trolling their own studio, but like there's a little bit of like, the, maybe there's a little bit of defiance of like, hey, I, I'm Momoa, I've got a big billion dollar movie. I can kind of make this happen and you're going to give me Ben Affleck for a couple of days. Yeah. Pulling rock moves. <laughs> and the, well, the cynic in me too would also say Aquaman 2 post the Amber Heard trial has some stink on it. Yeah. And so maybe there's a little bit of like, how do we, how do we PR this a little bit to our favor? I know. Let's put Ben Affleck in the movie. Now we, people will talk about that instead of how big Mira's part is. I'm going to say this, Brian, because I think about this all the time. I was actually thinking about it on my way to work. When back when Ben Affleck's name was announced that he was going to return in Aquaman 2, all I kept thinking about, man, how great it would have been if, ba if Ben Affleck would have directed a film or directed Batman um, Return of the Dark Knight or Dark Knight Returns, sorry, Ret Dark Knight Returns. And, and, and then I immediately thought after that, Zack Snyder took that concept and destroyed the possibility of that movie being made in perhaps our lifetime. He ruined a fantastic movie there just so that he can do his vision. That's what I'm upset about. You gonna tell me that that movie doesn't make Ben Affleck as an older Bruce Wayne Batman against an older Superman who perhaps, I don't know, maybe looks like still like Henry Cavill, right? And do that storyline, part one and part two. That possibility is over because nobody can say, yo, what the hell you doing? This doesn't make sense. What is the point of this? That that moment is taken away from us. And I and I'm sorry, it's like I don't I don't care for what none of Zack Snyder did. I really don't. Yeah, this I mean, this is a part where I am hundred percent with you, and it's made worse by the fact that I mean a lot of things got changed on route on route to Justice League. But as much as I love The Dark Knight Returns, I don't particularly love Superman's characterization in that book because Frank Miller didn't really, he's not really a big Superman fan. Yeah, yeah. And so he's I a, feel like- Sort of like a puppet in that. Yeah, he's a, he's a, government, he's a government stooge, basically, like a henchman. Yeah. Um, so by importing that into BVS, in my opinion, it not only made for sort of an unnatural introduction of Batman into that universe, provided that you were then going to make Batman the quarterback of the Justice League, which in and of itself made no sense. But I'm saying if your end game was, I need Batman to be the organiz organizer of the Justice League, introducing him in the manner you did as from the, the Dark Knight Returns version of Batman is a weird way to start that process. Yeah. In the process, it also kind of dumbed Superman down, which is one of the reasons I felt like Henry Cavill got jobbed in the sequels. He didn't have anything to do, right? He he went nowhere with the questions that were interesting that Zack Snyder yeah. asked yeah. in Man of Steel. So you kind of hurt both of those guys by using that story. When you had freaking World's Finest sitting right there as the obvious bridge that made sense between Man of Steel and Justice League, and they just ignored it because he I mean I get it Zach loves Frank Miller and a lot of what he does is, is an ode to Frank Miller but he forced Frank Miller's storyline into this progression and it made no sense 
How much money did uh Dawn and Justice make? Uh like eight twenty. Eight twenty. Should have made that to... two weekends. Should have made that in two weeks. Brian, if I tell you oh, we're gonna do world's finest, you're instantly gonna think we're gonna make a billion dollars off of this. Billion. We're, 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 That's we're, just we're, the we're minimum. Yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. just the minimum. And it only made 800 on a movie that wasn't even that well reviewed or liked by many. It made 820 or whatever it made. That movie should have made a billion. Batman is across the pond, like right across. He's right there. Gotham is like right there next to Metropolis. <laughs> I'm sorry, yo. You can't you can't sit there with yeah, you might have liked what Zack Snyder said, um, did with, with these films, but you can't say right sit down and say right there that this wasn't a billion dollar easily and it didn't make it. Why? Tell me why. Doesn't matter if you liked it. It matters if everybody liked it. A lot of people, the majority like it. It matters in the box office. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's the thing is like I know there are fans of the film. And I, I will say the director's cut is better than the than this than the theatrical cut, but like the numbers are what they are. This thing opened with a hundred and sixty-six million dollar domestic weekend. When you open at that level, which at the time was like a top six or seven opening weekend of all time, billion dollars should be assured. Like that should be easy, even if the movie's not that great. So for the movie to fall off as rapidly as it did means that people not only were like disappointed by it they actively disliked it and went out and told people you shouldn't see this like for it to decline at that rate justice league how much did it make last 600 million all right you and mean just the, as, the theater yeah yeah, yeah 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 and so the one that zack snyder released was better yes okay four hours worth <laughs> So do you mean to tell me, first of all, the studio wouldn't have ever allowed a movie four hours to be released in the theater. No. Three hours, maybe. And if it's three hours, they'll still run into the same problem, which I thought the Batman was going to make a billion dollars because of the hype. So you're going to tell me that that movie, would that the movie that came out that Zack Snyder wanted people to see, you th you're going to tell me that that movie would have made a billion dollars? I still don't think it would have done. Uh, at three hours, I think it would have been tough. I think it would have been tough. I think it would have, it would have, it probably does at least as well as BBS did, but I think it would have been a fight to get, to, it's not a lot that it would have gotten to a billion. So on to better news. Uh, Colin Farrell, um, yeah. spoke about he didn't the quote wasn't huge but he did make mention of how in control matt reeves is on the production of that show and the i guess the assembling of this universe the guy's like a science mad scientist he's working out everything How important, Brian, do you think this Penguin, although we're excited for it, we think it's going to be dope based on the performance that we saw in the Batman. Yeah. And I guess what we think is going to, um, uh, what we think the show is going to be about and, and the, it's basically the ascension of the Penguin uh, in, in Gotham. We're definitely excited about it, but how pivotal do you think this this show is going to be for the the rest of this universe to continue? Yeah, I think it is going to be important. I think you know, I think it's a good sign. I mean, Matt Reeves, by all accounts, is a pretty hands on, detail oriented guy. I remember, there were rumors of how many takes he was demanding on the set of the Batman. <laughs> so I guess I wasn't surprised when Colin Farrell said like Matt Reeves is like really in the weeds working on this yeah. show, even if he's not directing, you know, a lot of the episodes. 
but yeah, no, I think, I think this is a lot of the connective tissue, especially if we're going to get Court of Owls coming as part of the Batman. I think you can definitely tie together some threads and puzzle pieces using the Penguin and, and that. But listen, I mean, the portrayal we got. See, this is where certain, you know, we talk about like, I see Agatha, I'm like, really nice performance by Catherine Hahn. I don't need to see an Agatha show. But you see Colin Farrell's Penguin in the Gotham that Matt Reeves introduced, and that actually works for me. I'm like, yeah, you give give me a crime drama centered on his work in the underworld of that Gotham. That's a show I'm interested in. That's a show I think can stand on its own and give us a, some nuggets and some things that the sequel to the Batman maybe addresses. One last thing regarding that. Do you think the Batman shows up in that series? I'm going to say if he does, it's in the finale and not. I don't think he's involved. Let's suppose this way. He'll be referenced. He'll clearly be, like, I think you'll see the bat signal, uh, you know, but I don't, if you see Pattinson, I don't think it would be till the finale and I don't think his part would be very big. Um, anything else on DC? Let me put that back to you. Do you think Jeffrey Wright is in the series? I think this is going to be a straight up gangster film. I don't know how much... It hasn't been, nothing's been said yet. You would think yes, but um, it's 50-50 for me, based on what we've heard and what type of show that they, they're trying to do. Yeah. Um, so is we'll have to wait and see until they, they, they make the announcement as who's going to be in this job. Um... Random thoughts. We certainly don't have to get into a deep discussion about this, but this Madam Web stuff is horrendous. This is we're, we're putting Sony and DC in the same canister here, and just gotta in the same canister of, of horrendousness. <laughs> I was, you know, DC has some other stuff that's good with the Batman, but but with the in terms of catastrophe. Madam Madam Web is going to be a catastrophe. I don't understand what's going on. Like, I have no they, idea. They I have no was, idea. They, they announced who's in the movie, and I'm like, okay. Here, it's just like it's just like the comic book equivalent of like what it was like Big Brother, where they put all the people in the house and we just look at them. I'm like, what is this? Like, they also like when it first was announced, everyone was confused because the characters you know, geriatric, right? The characters are yeah, 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 yeah. And then they're like, wait, Dakota Johnson's playing a younger version of the character. We see her on set. And then it's like, they just start reeling in random names. Like Emma Roberts, Sydney Sweeney. I was like, you gotta be kidding me. Sydney Sweeney's gotta be better than that. She's after euphoria. <laughs> she's hot. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ooh, a sure bet. Like the dial was like, I made a name for myself. <laughs> Spider-Man. Thank you. I will take that. Like, why are you taking Madam Web? You could do better. Mike Epps, like what, what is going on? And then there's a rumor that like, this is Tobey Maguire's return as Spider-Man. I was like, dear God, no, if that's true, go back to playing cards. Listen, like, if, if, if they would have said Jamie Lee Curtis as Madam Web, I would have been like, yes, I can believe that. But we don't work for them, right? <laughs> we, we, we can't tell them what's hot. You know what I'm saying? This is what, this is the way you gotta go, but. Listen, DC is in shambles. Um, Zaslav can't wait for uh, uh, all this, the remnants of the yeah. prior regime to 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 disappear, and for it for for us to be really getting um, excited for DC. Right now, I have no excitement whatsoever. Just curiosity, and to see what the ramifications will be after these things are done. All right, what will be the result of all of this? Yeah, I mean, everything, you know, because obviously fandom will come later in the year. And it's like the things that were the things that are of real interest, it's the sequel to the Batman. 
it's Cape Crusader, which is more Batman. And then probably like the shouts, shouts to Blue Beetle. Like that, I think will be like the three things that, and then yeah, the Penguin, if we get detail, but that's more Batman, right? So it's like, you kind of go down the list and you're like, here we are again, it's all about Batman. And that's other than that, there's not a whole lot else that's that you're kind of pumped for. And even if Batgirl is more interesting than we think, part of the reason you're going to think that is Michael Keaton, which is back <laughs> to Batman. <laughs> it's just, it's all about Batman. And now it's like we're getting super um, Batman fatigue almost. I mean, right? I do think the one thing at Fandom would be a concerted, if they had it ready, which I'm not sure they will, but a concerted effort to reboot Superman would be the other like, I don't think it will happen. It feels very rapid to me, but like if they had director and they're like, this is the direction we're going in, we're cleaning out the Abrams version and maybe even we're cleaning out the Valzad version and we're just starting over. I mean, that would be at least notable and depending on who they get as the director or the right, that could be a big piece of news. Feels quick though, with all the stuff they have transitioning, feels quick that they would have all that ready by the fall. We should pitch. Uh, I, I'm pretty sure, Brian, that anything that's out there in terms of announcements for Superman are like dead in the water. So we have a shot to pitch a Superman show. <laughs> Cause hey, any listen, if people like our 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 pitches, then then cause I'm pretty sure it's better than whatever Warner Brothers is thinking of. Unless they get the minds, listen, unless they get if they tell me, yo, we got Bruce Tim, Matt Reeves thinking up what to do with Superman, then that gives me a little bit of hope. But if you leave it up to the execs of Warner Brothers and, and some people who who claim to have a vision for Superman that's not a Superman that that's gonna listen, you can't mess up Superman again. They're like on the Fantastic Four level. You can't mess this up. So Let's see. That's our show for today. Please hit that like and subscribe button. Let us know in the comment section below what you think, guys think about the DC Universe state. Um, yeah, we'll see you next time on the Nerd Gym Report.